Hello dear students, welcome to another biology class. In today's class, we are going to discuss about the, the third topic of UC first year science that is plant kingdom. So as we know, already we have completed the general characters of kingdom planted and also classification of kingdom planted. So kingdom planted has divided into five groups that we have came to know in the classification and the, the groups of the which, the groups which come under the kingdom plantae are algae, bryophytes, stratophytes, gymnosperm and angiosperm. So in today's class we will start with the, the general characters and economic importance of algae. Let us talk about the algae. Algae are predominantly aquatic forms. They are predominantly aquatic forms. Either fresh water or marine water. Means Algae found in water. Fresh water means river, lakes, like that. And marine water means sea or oceans. They also show varied habitats. They may be found on the moist stones, moist on moist soil, and also on wood. Some algae may also have association with fungi as a lichen and all animals, example sloth beer. Some algae may found in association with fungi as lichen and on animals, example, sloth beer. So this is about the habitat of algae. So algae are aquatic forms, they may be freshwater forms or marine water forms. Apart from this, they also show the variety of habitats and they may present on the moist stone, soil and wood and also they may found in the association with the fungi as a lichen and all the animals example sloth bee. The plant body of algae is simple simple haloid chlorophyll containing or chlorophyllous photoautotrophs. Photoautotrophs. So they are very simple organisms because their plant body itself says they are very simple because their body is called the thallus. Thallus means the body which has undifferentiated. Means we are not able to differentiate root, stem, leaves such a structure in the plant body. So that's why the plant body is said to be haloid. And chlorophyllous, because of the chlorophyllous containing in their cells, they are naturally undergo a photosynthetic reaction and such organisms are called the photoautotrophs. So let us talk about the next character. The size and shape. The size and shape of algae range from algae range from unicellular 
in Chlamydomonas. Filamentous in Spirogera and Lothrix. And they may be colonial form in the wall box. And also some marine forms like cults have massive halide plant body. Some marine forms such as cults. Have massive thyroid plant body. Means they may be unicellular so as in case of Chlamydomonas, they may be filamentous. as in case of Spirogera or we may also see the colonial forms. Colonial forms as in case of wall box. So these are the different shapes and structure of the algae. They may be unicellular in Chlamydomonas, they may be filamental form in Elothrix and Spirogera and they may also form in the colonial form. So let us talk about the reproduction in algae. Reproduction in algae. Algae reproduce vegetatively, asexually and also sexually. They reproduce vegetatively, asexually and also sexually. Vegetative reproduction is by the help of fragmentation. Vegetative reproduction is by the help of fragmentation. Whenever the thallus break into many fragments, each fragment will develop into a tissue. And asexually binds spores. Asexually by spores. So the example for spores, zoospores, aplanospores, Hypnospores, autospores, and akinates. So these are the asexual spores. Let us talk about the uh, juice spores. Zoo spores are flagellated, motile. Spores. These are flagellated and motile, and they found in favorable condition. They found in they found in favorable condition. When the environmental conditions are normal, zoo spores are produced. But these aplanospores, hypnospores, autospores, and akinates are produced during unfavorable condition. 
unfavorable condition. When the environmental conditions are normal, zoo sports are seen. When the environmental conditions are adverse or unfavorable for the survival of the organism, in that conditions, the spores like a planospores, hypnospores, atospores, and echinates are found. Among these, aplanospores are thin walled. Aplanospores have thin cell wall. Whereas autospores, hypnospores, and achinates have the thick wall. So thick wall is present in hypnospores and achinates. So this is about the asexual spores of algae. Now we will discuss about the sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction in algae takes place by the formation and fusion of gametes. Formation and fusion of gametes results sexual reproduction. So there are different types of gametes fusion as are there. For example, if homo or isogametes are fused, homo or isogametes are fused and zygote formation takes place, that zygote formation process is called the isogamous reproduction. For example, in case of clandomonas, two motile spores are when fused, a zygote is formed and this is said to be isogamous type. Isogamous type of reproduction or zygote formation. So example, clamidomonas. Clamidomonas. In case of spirogera also isogamous, but here non-motile spores fuse and form the zygote. Here also the gametes are similar or we may also call the isogametes. But these are non-motile gametes fuse and the zygote is forming. But this is also said to be isogamous type only. Isogamous type. Example in Spirogyra. Spirogyra. So there is another type of zygote formation that we call the anisogamous. That we call the anisogamous. In anisogamous type of zygote formation, two morphologically dissimilar gametes are fusing or heterogametes are fusing. One gamete may be larger in size, other one is smaller in size. So we can easily differentiate by their shape and structure. When such gametes are fused and zygote formation takes place and that zygote formation is called the anisogamous. You can find the anisogamous type of zygote formation in some species of clamidomonas. In some species of clamidomonas. Where anisogamous type of zygote formation is there. One more type of zygote formation also there in algae that we call the oogamous. Oogamous. In the oogamous, the female is large and non-motile. The female is non-motile gamete. Whereas male is very small and motile. If the fusion of such two gametes result in zygote formation, if the zygote forming such gametes, and this is called the oogamous. Example, we, uh, we see in the organisms, example for this oogamous, wallwox and fucus. In wallwox and fucus, we see the oogamous type of zygote formation.
So these are the general characters of the algae. So now we will move to the, the next is segment that is economic importance of algae. Economic importance of algae or uses of algae. Uses of algae or we may also say it to be economic importance. Economic importance of algae. The first economic importance or use of algae is 50% of carbon dioxide of atmosphere is fixed by algae during photosynthesis. They utilize 50% of atmospheric carbon dioxide for their photosynthetic function. And because of that what happens? So there is an increase in the, there is increase in the concentration of or content of dissolved oxygen in water body, in water bodies. So in water bodies, oxygen content level increases because oxygen is a byproduct of photosynthesis. As the algae perform photosynthetic reaction, the byproduct which is produced by photosynthesis is oxygen that is dissolving in the water. So by this, there is an increase in the content of oxygen in water bodies. So next importance of the algae is they are primary producers. Algae are the primary producers of food chain of food chain in the aquatic ecosystem. Aquatic ecosystem. Let us first of all know the what is food chain and then we will discuss about the producers. Food chain means it is a chain which exists in the ecosystem where one organism depends on the other organism for food. In turn, it becomes food for another organism. For example, here algae. They produce food by photosynthesis. By photosynthesis, they prepare the food. And this food is eaten by one organism. One organism. Some smaller fish, you may say some, some smaller fish. They feed on this algae, means algae is becoming food for this smaller fish and these smaller fish may become food for larger fish. Larger fish. So like this, one organism depends on the other organism for their food such a chain is called a food chain. So here we are using primary producers. Producers means those which are producing food by utilizing sunlight. And they are the pioneers or the first trophic levels. They come under their first trophic levels to supply the food. Means food supply or transfer of energy starts from that level. So algae are the producers because they produce the food. And the food which is produced by algae is transferring from one trophic level to the under trophic level. And these are called the producers, these are herbivores, carnivores or they are called the, the producers, primary consumers and secondary consumers. Like that also we will discuss. We will discuss in detail about this topic or this uh, about the food chain and everything in our second year syllabus. The next character. Some species of algae are Food for human and fodder for the cattle. Some species of algae are food for 
human and fodder for cattle example laminaria sargassum and porphyra these are used as a food by human and also fodder by the cattle next next economic importance is the hydrocolloids or gelling agents like algin and carrageen are used commercial purpose hydrocolloids which are also called the water holding substances water holding substances like algin and carrageen these are used commercial purpose used commercially used commercially so another such substance is there agar this is extracted from algae zelidium and gracilaria extracted from gelidium and gracilaria and this is used in the microbial growth and also in the plant tissue culture and in the preparation of ice creams and jellies this agar is used in microbial growth as a media as a media in microbial growth in plant tissue culture and also in the preparation of ice creams and jellies and zits and some unicellular algae like chlorella and spirulina which are rich in protein content and these are the good protein supplements by space travelers and also protein deficiency so these are the some of the economic importance of algae so algae are classified into three classes based on the presence of pigments we'll discuss that part in a next class so here i'm going to end up the class thank you